انتقال که در کنفرانس کابل وقتی که حکومت افغانستان ای را به جامعه بینی مطرح کرد ای انتقال انتقال تر نظامی نیست انتقال حکومتی هم است انکشافی هم است یک چیز اولویت های است که در کنفرانس کابل مطرح شد در عین زمان در کنفرانس کابل گفته شد که انکشاف و به وجود آوردن ظرفیت ها در تمام قسمت های حکومت باید وجود به قسمت قوی اجرایی هم دولت هم حکومت یعنی دولت قوی اجرایی قوی قضایی قوی اجرایی و مقننه و در حکومت هم در تمام سکتور های حکومتی باید این انکشاف و اضافیت ها بوجود تا ای که انتقال به صورت درست صورت کرده بتانم سرطشکر جلوزه محترم سلامت بشه There is no doubt that we are in a critical juncture and also the media is always portraying a, a gloomy picture and always saying that it has been the longest war while in the nine years we have not made any progress. Much progress. I think uh, the answers are very simple. I think we have underestimated <coughs> the enormity of uh, the rebuilding a nation, institution, and its, in, its infrastructure which has gone through three decades of war and destruction. Also, we underestimated the threat. The initial figure for the Afghan National Security Forces, 70,000 army and 60,000 police were far below based on any troop to task on any other <coughs> historic example. The insufficiency of enough forces have had any much negative impact on conducting the proper counterinsurgency operation. Relying too much on counter-terrorism operation and uh, raids and also airstrikes have alienated some of the population. And also Afghanistan was an economy of course for many years and only in 2007 and 2008 uh, we are seeing some effort to build a credible Afghan security system. And then I think there is also, we have to admit, there has been underperformances by us Afghan also. And also the implementation of the aid program with, uh, with the these uh, overhead charges have drained a lot of resources and also weakened the Afghan institutions. So we have come a long way on a difficult journey. But with the, announces of the announcement of the new strategy, I think the way ahead was clear. And it was not a strategy that was focused narrowly on counter-terrorism operation, but just on a comprehensive seven military campaign, which has the element that even to defend, uh, I mean to defeat the ideology and give us a lasting peace. And it had all elements of success, which we have longed for since 2002. And based on that strategy, now our mission is unequivocal and clear, protect the Afghan population. We have all agreed explicitly that civilian casualties are unacceptable and actually all effort has to be directed to assure the Afghan government authority and to re re reinforce the government legitimacy and its sovereignty. 
based on that, to ensure our, the inevitability of our success and victory, we have all agreed to accelerate the growth of the Afghan national security forces, improve governance, rule of law, and economic development, strengthen our partnership with ISAF forces, Afghan-led operation, including transfer of, uh, including detention operation and transfer of detention facility, and also proceed with full supported Afghan-led peace and reconciliation and strive to achieve <coughs> closer regional cooperation and finally to, all, uh, to optimize all elements of the Afghan national sovereignty. All these years, I think I have been saying that the only sustainable way to secure Afghanistan is to enable the Afghan themselves. For the Afghan success means to be able to defend the nation independently with having ISAF, NATO, and the United States is a enduring strategic partner and support. And we do believe that the Afghan solution is cost effective. It is politically less complex and it would save lives for our friends and other. Now very briefly I will touch the security situation. As you are all aware in the last year the enemy attacks have increased considerably so the use of uh, improvised explosive devices and correspondingly, the number of casualties have <coughs> risen also. But some of it was because the ISAF and the Afghan National Security Forces were operating for the first time in some areas which they had never gone before. In the meantime, there was a high tempo of the operation for ISAF and Afghan National Security Forces. So the result, I think, uh, was that uh, the violence had peaked during the election, but mm -hmm. after that, with a higher tempo, operational tempo of NSF and ISA, <coughs> we were able to gain the initiative. and. And we were able to do that by conducting a proper counterinsurgency operation for the first time in Afghanistan. The results were quite obvious in Helman and also in Kandahar. We were able, I mean, to establish the government control in some of the most difficult in the actually the, the hearts of the enemy territory. And the result is now the people are not oppressed anymore there. They have a right to choose which they are exercising. And the perception of security in the government has, has improved immensely. And just to, to mention, I think there are really good indication that there is a change in the tides on our field. If the key to success in coin operation is going to be the support of the people, that in that case I think we are getting that support. And that has been, uh, can be illustrated very easily that the number of IEDs which we detect and neutralize with the help of the people have increased between 70 to 80 percent and the, for the last four or five months it has been that high. And also the, the number of the tachet which have been identified with the help of the people who captured and destroyed 
if we compare 2009, the last three months, it was 163, and now for the last three months of 2010, it was over 1,000. <coughs> and uh, the recent statistics of even have gone much, much higher. So if, uh, and also, I think what, what we have done uh, during these operations that we, we have, uh, focus our conventional forces on protecting the population and directed our spatial operation forces to keep the enemy on balance. And that is the result, you might have the statistics, the enemy has suffered really heavily. And both in their fighters and also their net level and low level Taliban and that have been the cases that in a row three times, I think the shadow government which they appointed, they have eliminated, captured or killed. So there is improvement as far as the security situation is concerned, and we are hopeful that uh, we have degraded their capability enough that uh, though I think some of us are predicting that the coming year will be very bloody and difficult, but. Uh, I hope uh, that will not be the case. The enemy is using more form fighters now than the Afghans, and a lot of these suicide attacks, which have taken place recently, I think most of it has been the work of foreign fighters. And also, that shows some sort of uh, desperation on the part of the enemy that in actual combat operation, they, they have lost their confidence and they are focusing to help these news-making sensational uh, attacks with multiple suiciders combined with, uh, with uh, commanders. Uh, to that, if, I, if I go to the Afghan National Army, uh, it, uh, the Afghan Army continues to be a success story. I'm not saying it's perfect. There is a lot of room to improvement. It's very really difficult to raise an army and fight at the same time. But uh, it is actually a potent symbol of reform. It, it is the physical manifestation of the new Afghanistan illustrating our, our uh, transformation to a nation which would like to take once again its destiny and its own hand. Uh, we have with accelerated growth, which was approved, we were worried that the quality of the force might be in danger. But fortunately, that has not happened. The quality has almost, there is an improvement of more than 50% of the quality of the force based on all the statistics which are available. And the reason, the reason is, I think, more focus uh, on the lesson learned through the past 20 years partnering and ISA have enabled the ANA, I mean, to learn, to reach, to sleep, and to fight together. So it has been a 24 hours constant uh, training process. In the meantime, the ratio of trainers to the trainees from one year ago, which was 1 to 79, has been to 1 to 29. So, so that question of quality, if, if we do hope that we, if the future we will be to make further improvements. The other issue also that accelerated growth have enabled us to outnumber ISAF forces in some major operations. Like in Operation Hathori and Kandahar, I think it was 60% to 40% of the ISAF forces. And now I would like to say that how, how I see the future and what is our way ahead how we will go uh, and proceed. So uh, I think uh, that our journey towards self-reliance and professionalism will continue with more speed and vigor. So we will also improve our performances through transparency, accountability, and reinforcing our codes of conduct. And with improved retention and attrition, I think we will reach the 378,000 figure ahead of schedule 
uh, ahead of the end of October of 2012. We will also have positive improvement towards self-sufficiency in combat support, in combat service support units, and also in our broader institutional building. We will strive to lead more operations and also what we will do that we will increase the proportionality of Afghan national security forces to the ISAF forces in some of the future operations. We will try to change the narrative of winning the war of perception which is, have been uh, negative all along. And as we become more capable to defend our territory, we do hope that our neighboring powers will come to the conclusion and they will accept the reality, and then we will be able to uh, establish those mutually beneficial uh, relations which we have sought since 2002. And with the help of our friends and allies, I think we will vigorously address the question of sanctuaries. And we will apply all the lessons learned, especially the protection of the population and ensuring their participation and uh, <coughs> participation in the governance, the rule of law, the security and economic development. And based on our mutually agreed plan, I think we will we will we will commence a transition, which is of utmost significance to the Afghans and also to the international community. Transition is uh, as a result of the already jointly agreed plan of the Afghan ownership in Afghan leadership. So all our fourth generation uh, attempts and operations will be conducted toward organization. <coughs> and we have all already have agreed that it will be a process. It will not be just an event. It will also <coughs> will not be detached from the realities on the ground. It will be also not a victim to the desire to, to the, that uh, hope <coughs> which is standing out for early results and it will not be held hostage to local political agendas, and neither it will be synonym to <coughs> withdraw <coughs> or waning the commitment of the international community in the longer term. So we have all agreed that it will be meaningful, will be condition-based, and it will be should become every person. So based on that, I think uh, we are all, we Afghans are totally dedicated to the vision which was articulated by our president in his inaugural speech to take the lead of all the operations in three years and the full security, physical security responsibility and fighting. 